Well, this is a new twist. We don't normally talk to each other on Friday, but hey, it's my YouTube channel. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Friday, February 10th. Now, I hope you've got plans for the weekend, maybe getting out and about or staying in and cuddling up. Whatever it is, enjoy yourself. Me, believe it or not, I'm probably going to be doing some more research and due diligence. I can actually relax doing that. If you take away the trading at the same time, it's not all that hard. It's actually more enjoyable. Now, I'm going to be looking at what we're always looking at, OTC and penny stocks. Now, a penny stock is any stock under five bucks. So we're going to be looking at stocks on the major exchanges as well as the OTC because stocks under five bucks are on every exchange. Hunting is good for the penny stocks. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, this is the site I use right here. You probably already know that. But if you're not using it, I got to ask you why? Why? This saves you so much frustration. Going out to the internet, you can probably find what you're looking for, but how much other stuff do you have to sort through to find it? That's ridiculous. I'd rather find my coins on top of the ground than have to dig down in there trying to find it. So this this is money just laying on the surface. Lots of information. You've got your news over here. You've got corporate actions, which will tell you tier changes if they go from the pink up or pink down. You've got uh, splits. All that information is posted here every single day. Not to mention your share structure, your financials, your filings, all that important stuff. So get off that search button over at Google and come on over here. I swear to God, you're going to thank me one day for this. All right, let's take a look at how we finished the week off here on the OTC market. Oh my God, please let it bump. That is pathetic there. We're down to $1.1 billion. <laughs> Oh, so what are we at? We're at 10 minutes after the bell. I would have expected a bump here. Wow. Whoa, all the numbers are low. $1.1 billion volume. That's almost half of what we used to consider our low average of $2 billion. 5 billion shares. Half of where we need to be. $10 billion is second gear. And oh my goodness, our trades have dropped from our low average of 250000 down to 214000 I'm getting a feeling a lot of people just don't trade on Fridays. It's the slowest day of the week for the most part. And I'm getting a feeling a lot of people just take the day off because that is really low. That's the lowest I've seen it. Well, I don't remember it being lower. I'm sure it has been, but that's pretty low. All right, enough crying in our Cheerios. Let's go look at some stocks that do have hope, that do have potential of making us some money. Come on, I know that's why you're here. Some of you may be wondering, how do I determine what three stocks I'm going to share with you at the end of the day? I mean, honestly, there are thousands of stocks out there. How do I narrow it down? Well, I'll tell you this for a fact. I'm not paid to talk about these stocks. God, I wish I was. Do you know how much money I would have? I talk about a lot of different companies. No, I'm not that big of an influencer yet. No, I actually go out on a hunting expedition every single day. I used to hunt the news, looking for hot news, but just because the news is hot doesn't mean the chart is hot. So what does mean the chart is hot? A hot chart. <laughs> so I just go looking at the charts. Honestly, I put up my favorite scan, my hot penny scan, from double zero one to three dollars. And I drop down to about 10%, 8% gains on the day. And I do this around 11 in the morning when the market starts going, starts heating up. And I'm just not looking at today, I'm looking at four hours. Looking at four hours, six months. And I start looking at every single chart going down from 10% to eight to six. And I'm looking for charts that have heat. Now, what's heat? Well, a trend change. It was falling down and now it's starting to come up. Or a lot of volume has been building up here recently. Or it's just set up to go over a major SMA. Those sort of things. And when I find a chart that's warm, then I go look for the match. Lingering news. That's what we need to ignite that chart. What's lingering news? Well, that is a news press or a filing that came out a while back. Maybe 30 days, maybe two months. In either case, they tell us about something that's going to happen in the future. Here we are at the beginning of February. They say something's going to close at the end of February. 
Well, the price has already gone up on the news way back then, and now it's come way back down. It's just kind of doing nothing. Nobody's paying attention to it. Everybody's kind of forgot. But we know there's a catalyst coming up. There's a toll booth up there. Wake up, wake up. So we are looking at stocks that may be under the radar, but have a catalyst ahead, and the charts are warm and could break out and pay us. So the first stock we're taking a look at is OILSF, Saturn Oil and Gas. Not normally the kind of company I would look at. Oil companies, gas companies, it's just not my thing. But when I'm hunting, I'm not real particular about what meat I eat. I just want to get some gains. So whatever the charts tell me, I just look to see if it fits. And this stock has got news. They had news come out about a month ago, which isn't as old as I prefer, but they do talk about something that's just about ready to happen. They made a deal and it hasn't closed yet. Not to mention this company is making some good revenues and it is increasing very quickly. And that's really what caught my attention and that's why I'm sharing this with you. So OILSF finished the day at $1.85 with about 4.5% gains. Hey, look at this, she's on the best tier on the OTC. That's actually what they call the QX, the best tier. It's best because they give us the most information. They're the most transparent, the most trustworthy. Matter of fact, they give us so much information that they could easily be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange if they chose to. That's how much information we get from these companies. They do have a verified profile, independent directors, which you need to uplist, may have used those to come to the QX, may want to go to the NASDAQ. It's very well possible. And they are penny stock exempt. That's a bonus. Penny stock exempt means that they have been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars in assets that entire time, and haven't had any problems with their financial filings. They're reliable. So this is a good company to be looking at. So. They tell us here that Saturn Oil and Gas is a growing Canadian energy company focused on light oil weighted assets, supported by an acquisition strategy that targets highly accredited complementary opportunities. Saturn has assembled an attractive portfolio of free cash flowing, low decline operated assets in southeastern Saskatchewan and west central Saskatchewan. Canada, in case you didn't know. So what was the relative volume around the company today, considering there's no direct catalyst? Well, it's a nice jump. I mean, we've got what, 500% uh, increase there roughly from 30,000 shares, which is seriously under the radar, to 152,000 shares, which is still kind of under the radar. But that is a 500% increase, which means more people are paying attention to it for a reason, right? Share structure. We not look this one up. It's virtually the outstanding shares, about 57, 58 million. So it's not a bad float, but it's pretty much all the outstanding shares, 57, 58 million. Financials. I do want to talk about these because they're impressive. Over the last three years, they've been growing 13 million, 5 million, 77 million. You're saying millions. I don't see no millions there. Hold on. There's three zeros up there. You got to put behind any of the numbers on this chart. So yeah, that is 77 million and they got to keep 43 million. But look at what they're doing here quarterly in 2022. There's 46 million first quarter, 54 the second, 68 the third. You're looking at over $160 million in the first three quarters of 2022 when they only did 77 for the full 2021. And we still got one more quarter to go on that. So I see the money is pouring in and they're making deals right now, which is going to help them make more money. Disclosures. We got anything current over here. We have nothing current since uh, March 2022. And it was just a D, which is just an outlay of the company. So let's jump on over to that news. Now they've got news here. Most of it is about conferences or uh, getting on the QX, stuff like that. But we've got one piece of news here that wasn't up here. Ooh, they snuck it in. This is the news we're going to take a look at. So this news came out January 20th. Saturn Oil and Gas announces acquisition of Ridgeback Resources, expanding their production to approximately 30,000 barrels of oil a day. They also got some extra financing and some lead orders in this deal as well. Now, this has got to stay between me and you, what I'm about to share with you, okay? Because they tell me right here, I am not allowed to share this in the United States. So, mum's the word. 
All right, this has got to be one of the longest news presses I have ever seen. They've got all the information here about how much oil they're going to be pulling out every day, how much the barrels go for, the revenues. I mean, it just goes on and on. As you can see, it just goes on and on. So I did not read it all. If you're really interested, there is quite a bit of information here, but I did glean out the important stuff. They tell us here that the company has entered into an arm's length arrangement agreement to acquire Ridgeback Resources, a privately held oil and gas producer focused on light oil in Saskatchewan and Alberta, Canada for about a half a billion dollars, 525 million. So it's no little deal. The Ridgeback acquisition is expected to close the first quarter of 2023. That's right now, folks. Matter of fact, we've already lost half of it. There's only about 45, 50 days left in this quarter. That's your window of opportunity right there. They also tell us down here that they are expecting production levels at closing date to be comprised of about 12,000 barrels. And that's just one piece of information I've pulled out here. There's lots of it. What I'm trying to show you is there's not going to be any waiting. Once they close, Boom, business is operating. This company they're getting a hold of is already doing business. They're already pulling oil out of the ground and they've got lots of oil down there. So as soon as they close, they got 12,000 barrels that they can expect to be coming up daily that they're gonna be making money for. So the revenues are gonna continue growing. That's why we're looking at this chart because that's what it's all about. Companies that are making money, those are the ones we should be looking at. We're looking at it. Now let's go look at the chart. I know you know where we're at, but maybe somebody doesn't. This is my free trading platform where we're going to be doing all of our charting. This is Think or Swim. I got it when I signed up for my free trading account with TD Ameritrade. They gave it to me for free. Pretty nifty, huh? All right, let's take a look at Saturn Oil and Gas. This is ticker OILSF, Oils F. We got a six month, four hour chart here. Her high was hit in November of $2.26, and then she fell all the way down to $1.66 in December. And here in February, we are currently at about a buck 85. Now she has been falling ever since that high bubble. She had her papa bear bump, her mama bear bump, and her baby bear bump, and doesn't look to be doing a whole lot more. Until you look at the volume, Look at that volume increasing, folks. Over the last 10 days, she has steadily been increasing to the apex of today, and tomorrow could be more. Who knows? And we can see it had a grand effect. Brought her out from underneath all the SMA. She was under the nine. She's gotten on top of the nine, on top of the 20, and on top of the 50. This is looking very strong, and the technicals agree with me. Our PPO is just about ready to cross that pink line and get on top. That's going to give it some more oomph. We've got a crossover on the MACD already. Green bars are accumulating and our RSI has jumped from 42 up to 57. We definitely have a warm chart on the four hour. 20 day, one hour view. Well, about 18 days ago, she was over the 200 day SMA, crashed through that and has been down there all this time until today when she had a serious change of mind and heart. Look at this, again, underneath the nine day SMA, huge bar. I mean, determination here, shot through the 20, shot through the 50, and yes, it even shot through the 200, fell back to the 50, and then just pursued its climb back up on top of that 200, and it's sitting up there like a proud king right now. Technicals are great. PPO is pushing up strong. MACD is over the signal line with the green bar still accumulating. RSI has got a slight pullback. There you don't, well, we do see a small pullback right there. We might see a red bar on the five day, five minute. And we do, just one little wee red bar. So she was under the 50 day SMA here, tried to break it, got real high, whew, fell real low, came back on here and steadied off, got across our 50 day SMA, negotiated with it, and today won the negotiations, and she's been climbing all day, riding on that nine day SMA. She is starting to pull away from it. I would always watch when the price gets too far away from the nine day, it'll probably come back in a big hurry and get close to it if it doesn't break it. Right now, this is looking good, and our technicals, all of them, all of them are pushing up. Look at that, folks. Everything looks like a tsunami. That's what we're looking for. O-I-L-S-F. Looks like she wants to go and grow, folks. The charts don't lie. And you know what the catalyst is now, but hey, 
you saw how big that news press is. Maybe you want to do just a wee bit more DD. But as far as the charts go, this one's a winner. Ah, now here's a company that doesn't need much of an introduction, I'm sure. This is Natural Shrimp Incorporated, ticker SHMP. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the company, this is a U.S.-based startup company that is growing shrimp here in America in these enclosed seawater systems. They've got a couple of facilities already. They build them in rural areas with cities around them so that they can go out in a 300-mile radius and deliver these fresh shrimps to stores, people, restaurants, and they're getting prime prices for them. Well, we've talked about this company a few times. Matter of fact, the last couple of times we looked at it was in August and October. Remember, she had big news. This came out October 25th. Natural Shrimp announces merger agreement with the SPAC Yoda acquisition. This business combination with Yoda has the potential to significantly accelerate our efforts for commercialization and the ramp up of production of our fresh land-based gourmet grade shrimp at the largest indoor farming facilities in the U.S. We also expect that the merger will provide us the additional capital to advance facility expansion efforts in the strategic markets in the U.S., including Florida, Nevada, and the Northeast. Combined with our capital efficient model, the transaction has the potential to put natural shrimp on the fast track to roll out across the 10 largest population centers in the U.S. They're going to have money to spend when this deal closes. That's the whole point behind a SPAC. A SPAC sells those $10 shares before they make a deal. They don't know who they're going to be dealing with. And they put all that money in escrow. Well, they've got $175 million. Yoda does. Well, as soon as they close this merger deal, shrimp gets that $175 million. So they're going to have money to use that they don't have to pay back to put out those facilities. So this thing is ready to grow. So she finished the day today just a little over seven cents, 0 0.0725 and about 1% down. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. This is the better tier where you have to audit your financials. That's good for us. Just make them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got those two green ticks I'm always hounding you about, a transfer agent and a verified profile. Make sure you see these if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold. They have a lot of important information that's represented by those green ticks. But if you're just in the stock for a short trade, a day trade, a short swing, don't worry about it too much. So all in all, this company's looking pretty good right now. So I've already told you what they do. Let's take a look at their relative volume a little down from what they're normally doing. Her daily average is 1.4 million. Today she was down to 1.1 million. Share structure on the company, actually accurate, at least close enough. It is in the high 600 millions, 670, 680. I kept finding different numbers, but thereabouts we are in the high 600 millions. It's a pretty high float right now. Financials for the company. Well, they are just now starting to make money. They do have facilities. They are selling shrimp, but the revenues aren't showing a whole lot of growth right now. But they've, I think they got two or three facilities, and I don't know how many more they can get for $175 million. But they are putting themselves in prime locations near Chicago, you know, near Houston, so that they're going to get a lot of business from these restaurants, which is paying top dollar for these shrimp. So I'm expecting the revenues to grow, and things are definitely going to change when we get a filing or a news press about this merger closing. You know, I don't know exactly what it will be, but anything right now, since it's been so long since we've heard anything, we'll have this bouncing. At least that's my opinion. Let's check on her disclosures. Anything recent here? Not since her last quarterly report. She put that out in November and that covered September. So we're still waiting for December's to show up here as well. And jumping on over to that news. Actually, I got news highlighted here for you, right there. So this news goes back to October of last year. That's when the news came out about their agreement to uplist with Yoda. Then they filed the S-4 here. This was on the 6th of January. Now this is the important part. This is setting it in concrete. When they put in the filing, they're not talking anymore. The deal is happening. So there's no question marks about this. Then we've got two pieces of news about business. One came out in January, one came out in February. 
Natural Shrimp announces successful initial launch of online ordering home delivery program. I'm sure that's big business. There are a lot of people that would like to buy fresh shrimp that they know is quality, healthy, clean shrimp. So they're probably gonna do more business there than we can even imagine. And the last piece of news that came out was Natural Shrimp provides update on partnership with leading food service distributor, U.S. Foods. They tell us here that the company provides an update on its partnership with U.S. Foods of South Texas, including an exclusive grow out program for their customers in Austin, Houston, and San Antonio. U.S. Foods is one of America's great food companies and a leading food service distributor, partnering with approximately 250,000 restaurants and food service operators to help their business succeed. With 70 broadline locations and more than 80 cash and carry stores, U.S. Foods and its 28,000 associates provides its customers with broad, innovative food offerings and comprehensive suite of e-commerce, technology, and business solutions. So they've got another company helping them sell their shrimp so they don't have to do all the legwork. Business should start booming here, folks. And I think in the charts, even though they're low right now, are a strong opportunity for us. Let me show you what I've got. Fair warning, folks, this is not a pretty chart, not by any means. So if you've got a weak constitution, you may want to change the channel right about now. Seriously, though, she has been falling and she is still falling, which actually is good news for us because we're looking for a buying opportunity. We want the best price we can get, and you're not going to get the cheapest price if the charts are rising, right? Plus, we've got the advantage of knowing there's an imminent catalyst coming. They've already submitted the S4. They're way past talks. This is going to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts about it now. It's just a matter of time. So we're simply waiting for the next press release or filing to get this chart on fire. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view of shrimp, ticker SHMP. We got a high here of 19 and a half cents back in June, and we hit a 52 week low in September of seven cents. I've drawn a support right there because we are sitting on that low right now. We had a surge here, not real sure what that one was about, but I know exactly what this one was about because we were here before. That's what that blue line tells me. This is when the news came out that they were in merger talks with the SPAC Yoda. Had a modest jump from 12 cents to 19 cents, short-lived, came down under that 200, and she's been falling ever since. She's under the 50, under the 20, she's even under the nine-day SMA, sitting right on top of that 52-week low. She tagged it here twice, and then bounced off of it to the 50. She's worked her way back down to it, and she is tagging it right now. Now, as she's falling, you gotta remember, all of these SMAs are coming closer and closer to that 52-week low the 200, the 50, and they're gonna squish that price right in the middle until the price is either forced to go down or forced to go up. And I'm thinking it's gonna go up. Although the technicals say she is still pushing down. 20 day, one hour view. All right, she's rolling down underneath the 200, had a scrape with it here, but that didn't hold for very long. And she's under the nine day right now tagging that 52 week low, but look, all the rest of these bars here are not. They're all pushing up, consolidating, getting closer and closer to the nine day SMA. It looks like she's trying to stop falling. That's what it looks like. However, <laughs> the technicals say she's still pushing down. She's got a little bit of down to go, but I think she's gonna bounce off that. I've said that before, haven't I? Looking at our five day, five minute chart. Not a lot of hope here. What can I say? She's falling underneath the 200-day SMA, had a scrape with it here, bounced off the low, bounced back up to her 50, and is hugging that 50 right now, but everything says she's still falling. So I would watch this very closely, folks. We're waiting for news for this closing to happen. That's probably going to get the stock to jump. Then she's going to be up on the NASDAQ up at $10 or more or less, I don't know, but she'll be up there in front of all those big investors. That's gonna be a whole different game. So shrimp right now is at a buying opportunity. You just gotta pick the time to buy it. And when that news comes out, I have no doubt that this is gonna jump and jump good.
Last stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the OTC. This is sticker CGRA, C Growth Capital. Now, I found this stock the same way I found all the others by looking at the charts first. And she's got a nice warm chart. So I came over here looking for lingering news and I was surprised to see she has not had a filing come out since 2009. And her most recent news press came out in December. But, whew, thank God it's exactly what we're looking for. It is just dripping with lingering news. First off, they had a change of control. Some people came in and took over the business. Then they made two acquisitions and they said they were going to close those acquisitions at the beginning of this year. So we got a lot of reasons to be looking at CGRA. So she finished the day just a little over three and a half cents, but she fell about five and a half percent. She's on the pink tier, has that verified profile and transfer agent verified, so she looks good. So what does the company do? Well, it's not any of this. This is all outdated now. We've got a change of control and the new management's got their own ideas of what they're going to be doing. And we'll get an idea of what their operations are going to be when we take a look at that news press here in just a minute. So what was the relative volume around this company without any new catalysts? Impressive. I mean, seriously, without anything to push it, she jumped from 2.6 to 8.2 million. Definitely not under the radar. Share structure for the company. All oh, the heck with this. Look, if I see the company is on the pink tier, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to be able to find the float in the financials. And I was. Public float is 326 million. Financials for the company. All right. Over the last two years, they've been doing just around a quarter million dollars. Don't forget those three zeros, right? On the quarterly basis, they've been doing between 50 and 60 thousand dollars. But this is all old news, right? This is the old company. This is what they were doing. We've got new management, new operations. We're going to have new revenues. So we're going to have to see what changes here. Disclosures. Well, I already told you, they got nothing. Not since 2009. So we got nothing here to learn. And there's really only one piece of news we can take a look at. So let's jump into that. So this is the news. It came out December 15th. Seagrowth Capital Inc., Today announced that the company's controlling shares have been acquired by Red Clip Holding and the company is rolling out its new business plan. CGRA will appoint a new executive board early in the new year. The proven and experienced team will drive the company's new focus of consolidating and disrupting the growing sports and lifestyle sector primarily through the acquisition and consolidation of growing disruptive technology businesses in the sector. Nicholas Link will hold an interim CEO role until the new board is appointed and announced early in the new year. Now, Nicholas Link is a temporary CEO, at least with this company. He is a permanent CEO with ILUS, ticker I-L-U-S. But don't think there's any deals between these two companies. ILUS and CGRA have nothing to do with each other. We also learn here that CGRA has agreed to terms with its first two acquisitions and expects to complete the due diligence on the first acquisition within the coming days. Well, this was back in December. This business already sells from the USA to more than 10 countries through a limited distribution channel with minimal marketing and is now perfectly positioned to expand its range and scale up globally. The second acquisition is that of a disruptive Internet of Things company with technology aimed at sports venues, stadiums, events, and other lifestyle venues globally. The company has already featured pilot installations at several leading sports stadiums in the UK, the United States, South Africa, and Australia. Due to the value added by the technology and the vast interest in it, we would expect to gain global uptake within a short period of time through partnership with global brands on a revenue sharing model. CGRA has begun preparing an S1, which it expects to file with the Securities Exchange in the first quarter of 2023. Now, it's important to note that CGRA is not connected to ILIS, and although not formally connected, CGRA may well have significant areas of mutual interest and strategic alignments with Swiftly Global, the ticker DRCR. 
That's all the information we got here, but something's going on between DRCR and CGRA. You're going to have to do some more diving around to see what that is. But we've got two acquisitions. One is in the Internet of Things. And uh, what is the other one doing? Selling products. And they're both sports related. So things are about ready to take off here. And there's something going on with DRCR and this company. I'd like to learn what that is. Let's go take a look at the charts. Well, no doubt about this. That is an interesting chart. I mean this, seriously. This is ticker CGRA. And the very first thing I want to show you is right here, folks. You got a high bubble here, and she fell all the way back down, smack onto the 200. You know what's so relevant about that? That's December 15th. That is the day that the news press came out that you and I read about the change of control, about the acquisitions right there. You know when their next piece of news was? August. All the way back here before any of this activity. So there was no news during all of this activity. There was news before it. There was news after it. But that's it. Now unless there was a Twitter account putting out tweets to get the investors excited, I have no clue why this ran 3,200%. We got a low bubble there of a half a penny and a high bubble there of 16 cents. And I can find no reason for that run. And then right here, this is when our story begins. This is when, let's see here, right there. The 15th is right there, actually. That's the 15th. That is when the news came out. It fell, 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 bounced a little, and has just been streamlining downhill until all of the SMAs got straight. Look around, folks. Look at these SMAs. They're everywhere. It looks like a kid scribbled on my chart. Right, right here, it looks like at least a teenager tried. <laughs> and over here, they're finally getting all normal. They're getting into line. They're flat again. They're starting to position themselves, and the price can finally do something. Look, she was underneath the nine little itty-bitty tiny price bars. Once she started moving over the 20 and 50, price bars got big jumped up on top of that nine and has been climbing ever since. And our technicals are very good. Every single technical is on fire. Even though our RSI is pulled back, it's still in the overbought right now. And look at our volume. It's not tremendous like that, but it's more volume than all of this. There's lots of volume coming in. This is a nice four hour chart. 20 day, one hour chart. All right, our lines are pretty boggled back here, but as I said, they started to straighten out here. See, you can't even see them all. They're all so tight together. She was doing nothing really, bounced off this low bubble just to get back up to underneath the 50, and then the last three days, she's been taken off. We've got no new news. We've got no new filings, and unless there's a Twitter account, I'd go see if uh, CGRA has a Twitter account. She's running again. She is pushing up really hard. She's jumped up over that 200. She's on her nine days. She's pushing up. She hit a high. She's pulled back from that. Now, what I see here, that nine day is getting way too far away from the 20 day. You don't want the price to get too far from the nine day. It'll come back to the nine day pretty quick. And if the nine day gets too far away from the 20, it too will come back pretty quick. So you got to watch that. Be prepared for it. Either know the bounce is going to come or sell before it drops. Uh, technicals shows everything is cooling off right now. Real strong. Everything is bowing over right at this moment. We've even had a crossover on our MACD and our RSI is falling quick. Looking at our one, our five day, five minute chart. Nothing going on. Look at that. Sitting on top of the 50, right smack dab under the 200, beating her head to death. And then she just launched. God, I, I, I just would love to know what got this thing taking off and why it's still running. But we see there is reasons for it to run. I just haven't seen those reasons discussed or stated anywhere yet. So unless somebody knows something, maybe this is a pre-run from insiders. I don't know. You could look around. But we've got a nice jump here. She has jumped from about two cents up to four and a half cents. So you've got over 100% gains here in just the last two days. Pushed way far away from our 200-day SMA, and she's come back to it. The rubber band theory. It, it just happens. So we'll watch for this 
to land on the 200 it's coming in at a nice angle not real hard you know it could crush it and just dive past it but because it's coming in at a nice angle it could just skim off it and skip like a stone on water so we're watching for that here our technicals um they're pretty planted right now I think right now you just need to watch it coming down over this 200. If it comes underneath, you could see it come right back down to, let me grab my support here so you can see where that line is. Right about here, that is at three cents. Right now we are up at three and a half cents. I think it'll probably bounce on the 200 because she's coming in at a nice even keeled angle but she could come right up underneath that and land down here at three this would be your buy-in point i don't think she'd come below that not not with what's probably happening right now so i would look for it to come down to three if you're looking for your best price maybe expect it to bounce off of the 200 in either case Things are about ready to change and happen here, and I am sure the new management wants to talk to us. I'm sure he's going to want to give us some insights to what's going on. So I'd be looking for news before filing, but in either case, this has already started to break out and grow. And she looks like she's going to continue once she decides which one of these lines she wants to bounce off of. What do you think? You know, I often wonder if you guys try the sort of DD you see me doing. You know, looking at the charts first, finding heat, and then going to look for that lingering news. This is the first time with you guys that I've ever done that. I've always been a news hound. But I have been monitoring the stocks that we've been looking at. And of course, not all of them are rising, at least not now. These are swing trades. They're not day trades. We don't expect them to jump overnight. Give them a week, give them two weeks. What is the window of opportunity? If it said first quarter, well, that's another 50 days from now. I know maybe you're not a person who likes to hold for 50 days, but if you know the catalyst is imminent and coming and you see the stock is really down right now, patience is a virtue. It can pay you off. So I'm just kind of wondering, are you looking at charts more often than the news recently? Remember folks, due diligence, it can pay you handsomely. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.